The last stop in our initial tour of uh, C++ is something called a linked list. So we've already kind of dealt with things called arrays, where arrays deal with data that is, you have to know how many things are going in. And that's kind of a pain, really. So another way of representing data that's similar to an array is something called a linked list. If you Google linked list, you will certainly find this out. So the basic idea of a linked list is that you have some sort of data. This could be like an int in this example, or even a struct or something like that. And then you have a pointer to the next thing in the list, which might have some more data and another pointer. And it keeps going until there's a null pointer or a zero pointer or some sort of thing that says this is terminating. And the advantage of this is that you can actually have this grow to be whatever size you want. So if I want to add another thing at the end of this, I just create a new node. This now points to the new node, and that one points to the end of the list. It's easy to insert as well. So if I put in another node, I just like have that point there, have it point to the original spot, and we've added in another link. And deleting is relatively easy as well. So I just have, let's say I delete this 99, I just have the pointer point to the 37 over here from the 12, and we're done. And then I should delete this from memory as well. So there's some real advantages to linked lists because of that. Um, there's this one, which is a singly linked list or forward linked list. That's what this basic kind is called, and that's what we're going to be using for our first example. You could actually do something that's called a doubly linked list, where instead of just a next pointer, you also have a previous pointer, which allows you to go back and forth through a list. It's easier to navigate, but it's also harder to maintain, because if I delete something, I've got to maintain all of these pointers. And there's a variety of other ones. There's a circular linked list where it keeps going back around and around, and a variety of others. So uh, those are the main ones, singly, doubly, and circular, that you probably wanted to know about. And let's do look at an example of that. <clears throat> so here, I've got a class of nodes. My node class has a value, which is just an int, and a next pointer, which is a node pointer. Now keep in mind, this could be a structure, an object. It doesn't have to be an int. It's just whatever the data is, is what the, would go in place of this value. I've set up a couple of extra methods. So I have the constructor and destructor. I have a set value, get value, set next, get next. Just if you do encapsulation, the idea is that these things, these fields here should be private. But for linked lists, I'm going to need to be able to get and set all of those things. So I have to use these getters and setters or accessors. People that are very excited about very basic C++ will think this is a nightmare. Those of you in Java will be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, because we use that in Java. So here's the actual implementation of it, the C++ file. Uh, the basic node class just sets the next to null. And maybe, now that I think about it, I also want to set the value to 0 just in case, because who knows what that has otherwise. And then I've got some example code that walks through this. Over here, what I have is I have two methods, an add and a print, which are going to be dealing with the linked list. So this node pointer here, head, is actually the beginning of my linked list. And initially, this thing is, has nothing in it. And probably I should set this equal to null now that I think about it. So null is a special value. Null is the same thing as zero. But basically, it's a pointer to the zero slot in memory, which is always basically not allowed. And the reason you do that is it signifies that there's nothing in this pointer. So you can always check to see if something is null. So for example, down here, I check to see if the current pointer I use here is null. It's a way of basically checking for a termination of this particular list. So in main, um, what I'm doing is I'm adding 5, printing it, adding 7, printing it, adding 2, printing it. Basic things. So let's see if this actually works. So I have a list which is a 5, a list which is 5, 7, 5 and 7, 5, 7, 2. All right, so this is working. Now let's look at a, how I use the linked list internally. So when I add a 5, what am I doing? So the 5 comes in here. I'm doing it by value. And I create a node pointer current, which is pointing to the head. There's a temporary pointer that I'm using to walk through my list. So the first time through, when I have an empty list, current is null right from the get-go. So it starts, it just does this piece of code right up here and ignores the cell statement. So what it does is it takes the head pointer, makes it a new node, which runs this constructor here, and then sets its value to be the value coming in, so the 5 in our example. Now when I make it a new node, notice that the next thing is null then. Or I'm sorry, that's right here. The next thing is null. 
So when the next pointer is null, all I'll have is a value of 5 and a null next pointer. So when I print it out, that's important. I'll get to the print in a second because it uses a tricky thing called recursion, but let's look at the add 7. So the next time we add the 7, there's already something in the head pointer. It's, it's got a 5 inside of it. So current becomes head, and then we get down to this else statement. It says, while the next thing in current, current is currently pointing at head, is not null. Well, it is null right away. Head's next pointer is null. We just established that. So we set the next thing, the head's next thing, to be another new node. And then we go to that next thing and set its value to be the new value, the 7 coming in. All right. How about uh, we get to the next one? So we add a 2. So remember, we've got a 5 in there whose next thing is 7, whose next thing is null. All of that is from the head pointer. So we come in. We have the 2. Current's head. Uh, current is not null. Head is actually pointing still to the 5. We go down here. Well, current's next is not null. Well, the next thing after the 5 is the 7. So it's actually not null. So we set it to be the next thing. So now current is pointing to the 7 instead. The 7 does have a null next pointer. So we go to here. We're saying current, which is the 7. We set its next node to be a new thing. We say, all right, 7's next thing set its value to be the 2 that we had from up above. Wow. So basically, the, what this is doing is it's walking through the list until it gets to the end, and then adding a new node to the end. That's what all of this code is doing. You could equally have tried to add something to the beginning, for example. So all you would have to do is create a new node, set its next pointer to be the head, and then say head equals the new node you just created. If you're going to be deleting things out of a linked list, you actually need another pointer, which is previous, where you basically have current and previous. And you do some repairing of next pointers using those. Now, let's go look at this print method, which is kind of weird. So I say print head, and I pass that in. What happens when the 5 is added in is this next pointer is pointing to the same thing as head. That's what's passed in. If next is head, I just say print out the list. And if the, this next pointer is not null, so at the, per, at the beginning it's head, we print out its value and add a space. And then we call print on its next value. So it basically pauses at this line. And this variable here, next, becomes whatever was the one after this. How about that for weird? The first time through. This will be a 5. And next is the head, so it says list. And it's next thing, and it's not null, so it prints out the 5 and a space. Heads, it calls this again on heads next thing, so on the thing after the 5, which is null. This is not true, because next is currently is set to a null value. So it's not going to do this. It is null, so it just runs off the end. And the only thing left is a list 5. All right, that's tricky. How about this one, 5, 7? It comes in with the head pointer right here after the 5 and 7 have both been added in. This value here, next. Initially, it is the head value. It says so right there. So it prints out list. So we see the list here. Next is not null. It's the head pointer right now. So it prints out the head pointer's value, which is the 5. That's the first thing in the list. Then it prints its next thing. So it calls print again within itself. And the next thing is now pointing to the 7. The 7 is not the head. And it's not null, so it prints out the 7. So then it calls print again on 7's next thing, which is a null pointer. It's not, a, not the head. It is null, so it skips this and goes off the end. So the basic idea is that this is something a process called recursion. It's where you call a method within itself. And so that seems dangerously like an infinite loop, and you do have to watch out for that. It's the same thing as like this while loop up here, as far as like you have to make sure that eventually you get out of this while loop or you never leave it. The idea is that you have something called a base case. 
if this thing is a null pointer, that's called the base case. That means that we leave this infinite print loop. So any time that we do reach this, it stops going through the print over and over again. However, until that point, it calls print on whatever the next thing is. So it's recursively calling print over and over and over again until it reaches the end of the list. This is actually a pretty common technique that is, you can, it turns out you can use recursion or iteration with linked lists, and it's up to you which way you want to do it. So up here, this is actually a iterative way to get to the end of the list. I basically just, inside of here, keep setting current to be next while it's not the end of the list, over and over and over and over again. I could actually have done something like that here, where I have pass in a node pointer and just keep calling it on itself over and over again until I reach the end of the list. They're basically equivalent, and you can do one or the other, third, depending on which one is more, you're more comfortable with. But you should know how both of them work. One last time, this is iteration. You basically keep going through the list until you reach the point you want, and then do what you want after that. This is called recursion, where you call it initially at the beginning of your list or tree or whatever it is. You have a base case where if this thing is not true, it basically has an else statement off of here which says what to do if uh, it is a null pointer. In this case, I'm actually doing nothing but ending the loop. And otherwise, keep walking through the list, calling itself within itself. So that is linked list, recursion, and iteration. Hopefully that gives you a chance to start in on this particular project.